Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Commuters Live here at Sheffield Live Nights 3.2 FM. Chris and Ellie here, and we have the voice contestant, well, former voice contestant and singer, Vince Freeman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are we doing? I'm all right, thank you. Actually, I should say really good morning because it's actually good morning now, actually. It's good morning, yes. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, so um, uh, for our listeners at home, I mean, you were a voice, con- the voice contestant. So, Tell us a bit about your experience of a voice. Um, you know, I loved it. It wasn't something that was uh, in my uh, in my view uh, at the time. I did I didn't know about the the I didn't know about the show. It was the first series. I wasn't even really sure I wanted to do it. Um, but I think one one you know once I agreed to do it, it was just an amazing experience. I think more so because of the. The, the you know the people that I got to meet that that you know behind these kind of shows there's there's a huge amount of expertise and you know I I got to I got to work with world class musicians I got to get uh you know coaching from you know George Michael's musical director you know and and wow. those kind of things uh those kind of opportunities don't come along very often so there was that and I guess the 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 one thing that I that I took from it was. I'd always, up to that point in my career, I'd always, uh, you know, told anybody that was willing to listen, you know, give me a, you know, give me a shot, put me on a, put me on a stage, and I won't miss. And uh, and suddenly I found myself, um, you know, on on TV in front of a live studio audience, suddenly going, oh, I better not miss then, <laughs> you know. But uh, no, you know, I, I was quite, you know, I'm quite proud of that that moment because it, you know, it, there's. So there were so many ways where, in which you you know you could fall apart in 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 a moment like that, and uh, you know I I uh, I feel like I held it together okay. <laughs> I mean, I've got to say, I mean, I watched your performance of the voice on on YouTube because I'll be honest, I've never actually watched uh, the voice at all. I mean, it was only when I found out that you were on the voice, I thought I'm gonna have a look it up and see what it's like. Yeah, and yeah. When I saw you perform "Sex on Fire" by Kings of Leon, I mean, wow. Absolutely wow, and I mean, I am absolutely surprised that m- m- most of the judges actually didn't turn around because you were phenomenal. Well, I think at that point, uh, so I was my my blind audition was on the last day of the blind audition, so there was like 120 auditions for the for the um, coaches to, you know, to to sit through, and uh, you know it was over four days. Mine was on the last day at 10 o'clock in the evening. So by that point, I think uh, I think it was Will I Am and and Danny O'Donoghue still had spaces. I think Will had one space, and I think there was two spaces left on Danny O'Donoghue's team. So you know, I, I feel quite fortunate to have you know to have nabbed one of the spaces. To be honest with you, <laughs> and I also remember I think Tom Jones has had one space left. Will because he was that close with his hand. Yeah, he was that close to pressing his buzzer. And you know what I was saying? Go on, press it, press it. And it was a shame that he really didn't, but because he was so you were brilliant there. Thank you, mate. Thank you. And I've got to ask as well, I mean, do you still keep in touch with any of the uh, coaches? Uh not with the coaches, no. Um you know, I think I don't know whether this kind of will spoil the illusion, but you know they're 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 superstars, you know, and they're on they're on the show to be the you know, the face of of the 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 show. I think what the voice did really well was supported that with you know you know excellence behind the scenes. So, you know, I didn't get any coaching really from from Danny. It was you know that was all to you know to for yeah uh, to to camera, but I did get a huge amount of. Uh, you know, coaching expertise and advice from you know from world class, you know, experts in their field. You know, world class vocal coaches, top top class musicians, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I I've kept in touch with quite a few um, of the contestants. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm still I'm still very much in touch with you know John James Newman, um, Adam Isaac. And uh, you know, and David Julian, who's yeah, he, he, D- D- David was singing on the uh, on Strictly the other week. Actually, you know, he's oh. he's he's still very much, you know, very very active uh, 
uh, as a musician and the artist himself. So, yeah, so I've kept in touch with those. And uh, I mean, I've got to say, ask you, uh, I mean, who um, influenced you as a singer? And also, if there was anybody that you could work with in the near future, I mean, producer, singer, songwriter, whoever, who would it be and why? Um, if I could work with a producer, or you know, you know, it would be J Jacob Collier. Um, you know, that guy has come. You know, he, he I, I, I've, I've been aware of Jacob Collier for, for for quite a few years, but um, he's just he's just one of the you know one of these rare talents that come along, and and you just kind of go, you know, you know, it, it would be just great to be in a room with someone like that. It, it, um, I just think of him as like a he, he's kind of, a, of of the same ilk as people like Janis Joplin, Jeff Buckley, David Bowie. You know, they're just they're just they're just different, and you know you can't really put your finger on it. But they, you know, he's a, a real you know just a real like died in the wall mm. talent. And I you know it'd be it'd be great to just be in a room with him, you know, and uh, and uh, see if we could write something. Um, I think you know. One person that's really like just blown me away recently as well um, is Ray. Um, you know, not only because of her, because her story, because of her story, but you know that girl. Um, up, up to sort of very recently, she bypassed me, and then I uh, and then I suddenly, you know, I saw her performance on the Brits, and then I immediately went and watched um, her Royal Albert Hall performance, and I, you know. Probably in my whole adult career, I've, I've, you know, I've rarely seen some something like that. I think she's exceptional, um, I, and I think what's what's really brave about what she does as well is that she will quite happily span like every single genre known to man, you know, within the space of you know one performance. Yeah, and it's you know, it's it's marvelous. You know how you know how you can go from you know Louisiana jazz, you know, sorry, you know New Orleans jazz you know, to sounding a, a little bit like Jeff Buckley, then moving into kind of Shirley Bassey area and mm -hmm. then, you know, just throwing some, throwing some grime in there for, you know, just for good measure. Um, I do, and, and she does it effortlessly. And, uh, you know, I think, I think she's, um, I think there's some great things to come, you know, from her. I, I love the idea of collaborating. Um, I, lo I love working with other artists. I like, love writing with other artists. So, you know, someone like that would be that, that would be amazing. I'd, you know, I'd I'd love to I'd love to get on a stage and sing with her. That'd be great. I mean, speaking of uh, writing, I mean, you have also got an, a debut album called Scars, Ghosts, and Glory. So tell us yeah. a bit more about that. I mean, was it quite a long process, or was it did it come together quite quickly? Um, both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Scars, Ghosts, and Glory is is kind of in the name. It's it's um, it's kind of the story of my life. Um, there are songs on the album. It comes out uh, June fourteenth, and um, you know, I can't wait. There are songs on the album that you know are about my childhood. There's songs on, on the album that are about uh, you know, me free freezing my uh, proverbials off in a in a horse box, trying to serve coffee to anybody that have it, um, and you know. I, it's so in terms of how long it took, you know, it, it's, 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 this, it is the story kind of of my life. It's the, it's the, the album that represents my career. So it, it, it had, that has taken a long time in terms of the album itself. You know, some, some of these songs were written in five hours, you know, um, but five hours following a lifetime of experience. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you know, Imposter, for example, I, I went for a writing session with the producer for the album, Paul Visser. And, you know, we sat there and I and I said, I've got I've got this idea. I, re I really like the idea that, you know, I feel like the whole world doesn't it feels like it doesn't fit in, you know. And I, and I said, I, I feel like, you know, everybody's everybody's been somebody's son, somebody's daughter, mm -hmm. somebody's wife somebody's joy somebody's you know and and um you know i hit upon that and also it was a conversation that i had with my sister and she she had said to me she was worried about her her health and she said it in a quite a strange way she went yeah vince it's uh it's like sometimes i don't breathe right and and i was like that's a 
uh, it just it just stayed with me and I kind of went into the studio and I said I think that you know, I'd like the first line to be you know she said sometimes she don't breathe right you know and and then it you know the mirror only shows her bones and you know it's a story of somebody that feels like she doesn't fit in and but that that song was written and you know produced in five hours once we got started you know but the the idea is you know a culmination of a lifetime of experience I guess Hope that helps. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you for sharing. I mean, it does help. And I've got to ask, I mean, for anybody that's um, listening to this who wants to break into this kind of industry, what yeah. advice would you give to our listeners? Uh, I've been asked this a lot, actually. And um, it's it's funny because, I'm you know, I'm not sure that, you know, <laughs> who am I to sort of give people, you know, give people advice? But I think probably one of the things that I've learned uh, along the way is that um you know happiness and contentment is, is you know is something that people aspire to and I, I feel that you know I'm I'm very much I'm happy in my own skin these days and it's because I do something I love every every day I adore music it's it's not uh it's not something that I can't be without but I don't want to be without it mm. um and you know, I feel very lucky that I, I'm happy in my own skin and I get to do something that I absolutely love every day. Now, what I mean by that in terms of advice for somebody wanting to get into the music industry is, but, you know, just don't do it if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, don't, don't, go, into, don't go into the music industry chasing fame because it, it's meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It won't give you happiness. And, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, success, failure, win or lose, if you're doing something that you love and, and that happens to be music, then then you're winning, you're successful. That's, you know, that's the bottom line. You know, I'll, I'll be doing music for the rest of my life, you know, you know, whether <laughs> whether it be in my in my front room or you know, on a stage in front of twenty thousand people, it, it 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 ultimately, it doesn't matter. You know, I'd I'd love for this album to, to you know to be a huge worldwide success. You know, not you know not just about the money. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'd, but I I'm genuinely I'd love people to hear this this album because it's the thing that I'm you know I've never been prouder of anything. I wouldn't change a note. But that said, I've made the album. And I love that, and I love love music. So you know, ultimately, you know, win or lose, it, it you know, it, it's kind of irrelevant because I'm doing something I love anyway. Yeah. You know, I hope that helps. Um, you know, I could, I, I guess, I could have kind of gone into the my new show of the music industry, but I, I think that that's kind of more important. Thank you for that, Vince. I mean, uh, I think that I think that helps a lot, and. Uh, I'm sure our listeners will think that as well. And, uh, I mean, uh, we're quickly running out of time, unfortunately. And, I mean, I've got so many questions to ask. But uh, from a, I've got a couple of questions that I do want to ask for. So, for our listeners at home who want to follow you on social media, yeah. do you have, like, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? I've got the lot. I've got the full package. <laughs> and the best, for, for any of you listeners, listeners I find that because... Because of the maybe the age I am and the music that I I create, I mean the music that I create is but you know is, is very commercial, and I think it kind of, I think it crosses you know a, a, you know a, a quite a large demographic. So one of the things that I did was just create a um, you know a simple one page website, which means that you know if you favour X or if you favour um, Facebook or if you favour Insta. Just go to vincefreeman.com and you can just choose 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 your favourite and just click on the button. <laughs> and uh, I mean, and also, I mean, for anybody who wants to get a copy of your album, uh, yeah. how can people get a copy? Will there be a physical copy? Did you yes. talk? Yeah, uh, there's also there's all sorts that, that are going to be available. So there's going to be uh, physical uh, tape, CD, vinyl. Take your pick. It will be on all the streaming platforms as well. But if you if you if if you uh, like what you hear, uh, go to vincefreeman.com and you can pre-order. You just press the pre-order button and you can choose whatever you like. There's various different bundles and all that kind of stuff. 
Vince is a a bone. <laughs> Vince, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. And my final question for you is, is there anything that you would like to say to our listeners? Ah, uh, well, what would I what would I say? Well, the album's out 14th of June. Um, I'm touring uh, from the 7th of April all over the UK. Um, all the live dates are on the website, vincefreeman.com. I would love you to come and see me play. Um, the band is absolutely exceptional. I can't wait to get out on the road. Vince, hey. it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you.